ونسلم على رسوله الكريم ونعم بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته respected brothers and sisters in Islam just as a matter of reminder inshallah the format of the Jum'ah inshallah today will be the pre-khutbah talk and followed by the adhan and inshallah the Arabic khutbah and then salah will begin Alhamdulillah brothers we are at doorstep and threshold of a very auspicious significant special time in the life of every Muslim you know we sense when it comes to aspects of Christmas or the aspects of other important days and occasions of other cultures you sense it all around you that should be the case when it comes to Ramadan and Mubarak the great guest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes closer that sense of happiness not sense of burden brothers let us be very very clear about this Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam for 60 days 60 days not 30 days 2 months would make the dua Allahumma barik lana fi rajab wa shaban wa balighna ramadan oh Allah give us blessings in rajab and in Shaban that we might intensify and increase our worship to you through which we come closer to you bless us in these two months that we might prepare ourselves for this great guest which is going to come وَبَلِّغْنَا رَمَضَانِ and the hadith says Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam used to say make it such ya Rabbi Kareem through your fadl and grace and mercy that we reach the month of Ramadan 60 days just for one moment dwell, dwell on that point. Why would Nabi alayhi salam make dua for 60 days approximately? Oh Allah, make it possible for me to reach the month of Ramadan. What is in this month? What treasures? What mercies? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. But it's very, very important for us as, as the servants of Allah, brothers. We might view it from different points of view. Yes, we have to stay hungry from dusk, from dawn to dusk. Is that a burden for me? No. It is an opportunity for me to become one with myself and with my Creator. Allahu Akbar, you have people paying thousands of dollars to go for retreats. People paying thousands of dollars to go on programs to find peace to find tranquility, to have a stable, settled mind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has encapsulated all of that in deen of Islam. If we just look for it and we appreciate what Allah has given us. The month of Ramadan is an honor for every believer. And that is why Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam made dua for it. Now from just a bit of a different angle, I want to discuss the month of Ramadan Mubarak. That we all, alhamdulillah, I have full hope that each one of us have some goals and some kind of resolutions. It is, you know, not the end of the, of the financial year or the end of uh, the academic year, school year, but it's the end and the beginning of a spiritual year. Islamically, spiritually. So what resolutions? أَلَمْ يَأْنِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعَ قُلُوبُهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ Has the time not come for us? Each one of us look into our hearts. Has the time not come for us to become? The word I'm using, brothers and sisters, is a bit more serious in regards to Islam and in regards to our deen and our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we can speak on all many aspects of what we should do and what we shouldn't do in the month of Ramadan and Mubarak. But just encapsulated in one thing, if we can just become a bit more serious in regards to our attitude of deen and of our obligation and responsibility as Muslims, as practical Muslims who practically apply Islam, if we have that little bit and we can set that as a standard and a benchmark and a goal, inshallah, everything else in there we will find working for us. If you have that change of attitude, instead of focusing on one amal, I need to fix my salah up, or I need to do, 
try to bring that one aspect. I need to become alam yani lil ladina am. Has the time not come? And takhsha akulubuhum li dikrillah. That our hearts become subdued, subdued for the command of Allah. And takhsha akulubuhum li dikrillah for the remembrance of Allah Rabbul Azza. This brings us to the topic of the day, brothers. Inshallah, in the month of Ramadan, let us see how much we can appreciate and uh, attend muhadarat, lectures, whether it is the Juma lecture, whether, whether it is whatever programs are taking place in our local masajid, and draw as much as you can from those speeches and those advices. Our old enemy and old friend is locked up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this time for ourselves. Spiritual recharge. Spiritual recharge. Spiritual service. We take our car to every 10,000, 20,000 kilometers for service. Allah is giving us. Here is a time to take out the grime, the muck, the rust that has settled on your heart and your, and your relationship with Allah. And we will make it such. We will make the environment conducive for you to achieve that. Brothers, if we do not take our Islam seriously and our deen seriously and the month of Ramadan seriously, Wallahi, the month will come, the month will go, and we will be exactly where it has left us and where it came, if not worse. Allah protect one and all. Allah protect one and all. So it is with a proactive, proactive attitude that we need to view Ramadan with. One way we could use Ramadan in our favor, brothers, is through our kids. Now kids are such a thing, subhanallah, each married person, it's a natural desire Allah has put in the heart. Anbiya alayhi salatu salam, close chosen friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, were also human beings, also had this natural inclination. Zakariya alayhi salatu salam, what did he say? Rabbi habli min as-salihin, yarithuni wa yarithu min ali yaqub. At the age of 86, oh Allah, I don't have any kids. Oh Allah, grant me children. Oh Allah, grant me someone to take the name of Islam forward. So it's a natural desire each person that he would want and he would desire and she would desire an offspring, progeny, a next generation. If we see in ourselves and you ask each person who's expecting a child or who wants a child, what is the outlook for the child? More often than not you will hear, we only want our child, inshallah, to be healthy and to be a good person. To be a good person. And that is exactly the dua of Zakariya alayhi salatu salam. Rabbi habli min as Oh Allah, grant me such offering which are righteous. Very noble, mashallah. Very good. That's, that's, a, that's the way to be. So before birth, we have this hope of our children. Then inshallah, they will be good people, good Muslims. And inshallah, they will lead good lives. And then when they are born, we fulfill the Islamic rites of whatever the aqiqah and the shaving of the head and the circumcision for the boys, etc. Adhan and iqama, etc. Why? Because the novelty is there. The child has just been born. So we want to make sure the child comes into the world and enters it with that Islamic, uh, Islami akhlaq in him, Islami color and identity within him. Why? Because we are Muslims, we are proud of Islam and we have concern for our kids at that time as a novelty, they have come. It is a time when they have entered the world and they are innocent and fresh. So we try to instill the, these seeds into the heart of the child. Very good, Alhamdulillah. From there on, the child starts growing up. What do we start doing? We see to the physical needs of the child. Make sure the child has good clothes. Make sure the child, if the child falls ill, we make a, a plan to go and see the doctor. Make sure at least not weekly, it's not daily, but weekly, what is going on in school? How are you doing? What are your marks like? Are you getting into trouble there? What is happening? Education, academic education, secular education. We have concern and fikr for that. Very good, mashallah. All this, very good. Why? Because we hope that through this education, this child, inshallah, will get a good mark and get a good get good results and inshallah will get entrance into university and from there they will get a good degree inshallah and that will equals a good job and that will equals 
a stable life and inshallah we hope through that the person will say our child will settle down with a good spouse through all of this the important thing brothers is after that point when the child was born we lost something somewhere it became all physical the fikr and the concern for our children became physical but we forgot because of our own pursuits i'm too busy i'm too busy at work i'm tired when i come home i got so many things to think about to plan for the future so many a times the husbands will leave this on the wives the wives also spouses also they are also busy they have the house things to look at they are also if they are working etc whatever the case is so end of the day we are just too tired exhausted to sit for a few minutes and make some concern and fikr about a very important aspect of the child's life and that is the knowledge of islam the greatest brothers and sisters listen to me clearly the greatest enemy of us in our society in this country is ignorance it's ignorance not of secular mashallah that is going full steam ahead we are trying our best and very good mashallah muslims must be in the top places at every organization to further the name of islam and further the cause of islam but if there is no islamic education if we have some fikr and some concern once a week sunday two hours school we will give seven hours a day for five days a week but we are happy we are happy with two hours a week when it comes to islamic education What is Islamic education? What is Islamic education? It is our identity for posterity to come. Many a times, if you are involved with youth and youngsters, they suffer a complex, inferior complex. Many a time, they will change their names when they with their non-Muslim friends. Why? They don't want their non-Muslim friends to say that they are Muslim. They will not dress or have any piece of clothing. to say that they are muslim one youngster just just for us to understand one youngster asked me he tells me you got this on your head you you got this you go you, you go to the mall like this i say i go to the mall like this he says he couldn't understand he says people don't look at you he says people look at me he says why do you do it he says why do you do it i says well this is something which i believe is very close to sunnah so i try to to practice on it It comes down to one thing brothers it comes down to that confidence in our being muslim and confidence in in our islam and where will we get confidence we will get confidence through having knowledge about our deen what are our articles of our faith if people want to talk trinity to us what is our stand on trinity when it comes to articles of faith if people want to talk about terrorism what is our belief as muslims regarding terrorism and this is brothers many of us alhamdulillah we have come with our background knowledge from home from our countries we grew up in the structures where is dini knowledge was given in our masajid and madaris and maktabs and we have that certain amount of knowledge but what is to become what is to become about our next generation here brothers and the secret lies in the tarbiyah that is the only thing now here's the bombshell here is the bombshell if we want to make the correct tarbiyah of our children we ourselves will have to change our lives we are the standard as the parents and the adults and the leaders of society you will take three aspects on tarbiyah tarbiyah is such an important thing the nurturing and upbringing of the youth of society in fact it is a branch of iman yes a branch of iman ibn imam bayhaqi alayhi rahma has compiled a book on hadith There is a hadith of Nabi Ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam just for our understanding which mentions al iman bid'un wa sab'una shu'batun that is iman is approximately 73 different branches and Nabi Ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam says a'laha qawlu la ilaha illallah the highest form of this is the belief in the unity of Allah la ilaha illallah and the lowest is to remove a uh, harmful thing from the road and haya modesty is also a branch of iman so he has compiled the book on 73 different topics quoting from quran and hadith 
and making all this a complete, comprehensive aspect of a Muslim's life, that these are the branches of Iman. And one of those aspects he's got as a branch of Iman, it is our faridah. It is our obligation to our children. They right over us. The youngster said, Oh, Amir al-Mu'min, I have to tell you, whatever you have said, my father has done none, none, none of this for me. And Umar radiallahu turned to the father and said, You have come to complain of the rights, your rights of, against your son. You have not fulfilled any of his rights. You are the first criminal. He is acting with you in this way because of you not fulfilling his rights. Now, Alhamdulillah, in our society, very good, Alhamdulillah. The first two, I think, are very taken, very well care of, mashallah. We make sure we give our kids good names. We make sure, Alhamdulillah, we get good spouses in life. But the third part, how serious do we actually take it? Wallahi, brothers, it's for us to think about. It's right. It's the faridah of our child. And that is one of the branches of Iman, which Imam Bayhaqi has, has put in his book. So the three aspects of the tarbiyah of the child. Number one, akhlaq. The Islamic, Islami akhlaq and identity of a person. Now that starts from home. And the most important person there is firstly the mother and then the father. From a young age, brothers. The tarbiyah starts from the young age. Putting the seeds of the recognition and muhabbat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now you might say, oh, mashallah, these are very ideal things, uh, you know. But uh, where, where do we get all? It's simple, brothers. Spend time with your children. Keep a keen eye on whatever they're doing. And every possible time, don't nag. But let it come naturally. Sit down to eat. What do we say? My dear son, Bismillah. We start in the name of Allah. Where did this food come from? Eldi? No. It didn't come from Eldi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the provider, sustains us. You are inserting the ma'rifat and the recognition of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heart of this innocent child. And the child, kullu mawludin yuladu ala al-fitra. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned, every child is born on a natural disposition of Islam. The child will naturally accept and take in whatever you give it in regards to to the aspect of Islam. Then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, And then the parents, because of their, whatever line they have taken, what, however they spend their time, listen to me carefully brothers, however they spend the time, that is how the child then grows up. The environment, what environment do we set up? Each one of us needs to look at ourselves. What environment have I got around my child? Besides Islamic knowledge, that is, if it's there prevalent or not prevalent. But besides it, how much TV is my child watching? How many songs does my child know? When I go in the car, what am I playing for my child? When my child is on the internet, what is my child doing? When we go, where am I taking my family? This, what you do, what I do, what we do as parents, is either making our child, making the Islam of our child, or breaking the Islam of our child. When we go out to eat, where are we eating? When my wife dresses up, when I dress up, what are we wearing? Uh, somebody beautifully said, a quote, those who come after you are either better than you or worse than you. Those who come after you are either better than you or worse than you. So that's the bombshell, brothers. It starts with us. Firstly, akhlaq, and that's day-to-day -day things. Secondly, this is something which is, comes under Islamic education, but because we, we single it out for one reason, because Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam singled it out, and that is salah. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam specifically said, Muru awladukum bis salah wa hum abnao sab Order and instruct and command your children, practice, uh, mashq, you know, tamreen, do practice with them of salah when they are seven years old brothers even before then four years old five years old when you stand up to make salah tell your child to come make salah whether they don't know what they're saying or they're mumbling something or when you're going to sudu they lie down completely whatever the case is but that is the training brothers that is that that, that feeling there is something like this as well so nabi sallallahu says when they reach the age of 10 take note before they are mature age of 10 before they are mature, punish them if they are not performing salah. Punish them. 
if salah is right brothers in our life then I will be comfortable to send my child to the uni I will be comfortable to send my child anywhere with anyone if my child salah my child has understood the responsibility of the salah because Nabi alayhi salatu has said that on the day of Qiyamah the first aspect that will be questioned will be of salah if salah comes out to be correct everything else will come out to be correct and if salah comes out to be deficient everything else will be deficient we understand from this a clear principle if salah is established in our life not just this reading salah established on the right time with the concern of salah all the time that person's entire affairs of which are revolving around him in the other aspects of his life will be correct and if salah is found to be deficient out of time qaza uh, not proper you know uh, preparation for it khushu khudu a person is not making an effort that will affect everything around him so number two one is the islami akhlaq that starts from home we as parents day to day day to day dealings with our children we keep on giving them brothers you know love but the society is such my child anything you give a thank you if you're two years old thank you you see other children hi bye now these are good things greeting saying thank you uh, you know but we need to as muslims teach them muslim aspect the duas of nabi alayhi salatu salam what thank you say jazakallah when you see someone salamu alaykum assalamu alaykum when you are leaving, Assalamu Alaikum. These are salient features. There's something called in Aqai, salient features of Islam. These are salient features. Your Salam, uh, the way you conduct yourself, these small, small items. And these are the things which give the child that identity. Allahu Akbar. Uh, just for us to understand, brothers, Wallahi, please don't misunderstand me uh, that we are picking on, 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 on the, the children of our society. But just for us to understand. A child said hi, I say we say assalamu alaikum. They said we don't say I don't say assalamu alaikum. I'm in Australia, I say hi. Brothers, where is it? Today, 10 years, 20, 50 years from now, my children's children use this month of Ramadan and Mubarak to come down to some kind of reasoning regarding this aspect. And lastly, and but not the least, the most important is the formal and informal education of our children. Informal, very easy, at home from the formative years. From the time the child is born, two, three, four, five. What kind of stories we are reading for the children before they sleep? What kind of songs are we singing for them? Try to have a balance. Let them sing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star also. But try to give them some other anashi. Let them read the story of Red Riding Hood also. But give them some stories of Dambi Alayhi Salatu Salam. Get a balance for them in their life. And one and very important brothers is the formal education of our children. I make a call brothers to every one of us. And let us take this call to our areas that we are in. And try to speak to as many people about it. Every area alhamdulillah many areas where we are in have masajid and have, have uh, centers masjid is the markas the center of the mu'min if the child is coming to the masjid with you the child will understand that this is my this is where i need to connect to up to and famously my father doesn't understand me my mother doesn't understand me society doesn't understand me i have two choices drugs or the masjid the house of allah and the child doesn't know the house of allah and they reach that one age where they think no one understands them and you know uh, they have that belief that no one can understand them where is the child going to go he's going to go either to drugs and waste his a major portion of his life away if not all allah protect one and all if not that then he be was connected to the house of allah who can understand me better than my creator the one who has made me go and cry my heart out there and put my uh, complaints in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is that aspect. Now, many of us have masajid in our localities. Please, brothers, two things. If there are existing madrasas and education centers which have been run there, support these centers. If they are running once a week, speak to the people in charge to try and increase it for your own benefit, the benefit of your children. Constancy. Brothers, if a child has madrasa or Quran once a week, what can the child learn in one week? For two hours a week you won't earn for two hours a week but we want to earn the knowledge for, for two hours a week 
where there aren't any madrasas, look for people of knowledge, authenticated knowledge. Authenticated knowledge. Bring them, sit with them, tell them we have a need. And obviously, brothers, you'll have to support them financially also because for someone to be able to do this, teach our children, they need to free themselves from other aspects. They need to free themselves from other pursuits and other responsibilities. So we need to make sure that we are, and we, we can spend tutoring $50 an hour, mashallah, some places even more for English, maths and science. Very good, mashallah, very good. But let us put our priorities in place, get that balance in our lives. Where they are, support. Value the people of knowledge. Value the people of knowledge. They are very scarce in this country, but you will find them and value them. I'm sure if you look in each of your localities, you will find a handful of people of authenticated knowledge. Take them, rope them in and tell them this is a urgency, a matter of urgency for us. If I see my child crying, brothers, it hurts my heart. I want to comfort my child. But where is that sense of urgency when it comes? Days go by, my child is not performing salah. Days go by, my child is sitting hours in front of the television. He's feeding those images into his mind and his heart and her mind. Days go by, the earphone is in the ch my child's ear with music filtering into the heart of my child day in and day out. The sense of urgency, brothers, that something has to be done. And wallahi, we will be. Nabi sallallahu Quran al-Kareem mentions, Rabbana, hablana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrata ayin. Oh Allah, make our spouses and our children and offspring a means of coolness for our eyes. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu says, what is this coolness? Ibn Umar was asked first, that is the school something that will come in the akhirah state of being in the Jannah? He says, no, this is something you will find in this world, coolness of eyes, peace of heart and mind. And Ibn Abbas radiallahu explained, he says, لَيْسَ شَيْءٌ أَقَرَّ لِأَعْيُنِ الْمُؤْمِنِ أَوْ لِأَعْيُنِ الرَّجَلِ أَنْ يَرَى أَوْلَادَهُ وَزَوْجَتَهُ مُطِعِينَ لِلَّهِ There is nothing more soothing and calming for the heart and for the temperament of a person when he sees his wife and his child obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it comes back to us brothers. If we lead that life, if I leave my house and try to make an effort to get to the masjid, my wife will see this, my child will see this. What a happy occasion will it be when I will come back and after some amount of tarbiya, I will see my wife sitting on the sajjada, musalla, and uh, janama, whatever you call it, and sitting and praying to Allah. And on one side, my child is sitting with the Quran, preparing for the lesson for the next day. What barakat and warat will come on our homes. We are lost in a rat race, following something. Allah, my, my, my intention is not to lecture anyone. I'm also learning and we, it is something we all need to do together. But prioritize, brothers, a bit more serious. Use the month of Ramadan. Use our children as a means of coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and connecting them up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for other, our own good. Nabi alayhi salatu is mentioned and I conclude on this that when a person passes away every single thing comes to an end. Every single thing comes to an end. He can't do anything for himself. Whether he passed away 30, 40, 50, whatever. Three things. Three through three mediums that he keeps on giving, getting dividends from his investments. You know, we talk of investments, mashallah, and sometimes we lose uh, sleep over it. What I'm getting dividends, counting, counting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, you'll get dividends from these three things. Always, sadaqat and jariya. One is some charity, continuous charity for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some knowledge which was passed on. And waladun salihun yad'ula. A pious, upright child who knows who knows the status of parents and how will he know the status of parents? Through education. Who will make dua for this parent? Wallahi brothers, I spoke to a brother a few days ago. The man is over 60 years old. He says when we were growing up, every single day I would go and go pop into my mother's house for five minutes even if it was, five minutes. For years, 10, 20 years I did this. Today my children, four or five of them, they come outside my house drop something and go, they don't, they, they don't see me, I don't see them, we don't have a relationship, we don't speak, we don't have dialogue, did this happen overnight brothers? No, it didn't happen overnight, it didn't happen overnight, we need to see, is our relationship with our children leading to them, 
Or are we giving our children that education so that they might know what are the guidelines of Islam, what are the, the right things that they have to do, and what things they have to stay away from. Allah grant me first the tawfiq and yourselves to make amal and use this month of Ramadan and Mubarak as an awareness, spiritual awareness for us to better ourselves, to better the future of our children through creating and supporting centers of organized and structured syllabus, Islamic syllabus brothers. Not just something done haphazard, no, structured. Jurisprudence, aqaid, uh, you know, uh, Islamic history, etc, etc. Let us inshallah sit with the relevant people, people who are there who can manage this and use them for this. This is a time for us to come together. This is a time for unity of hearts. Not a time for the breakage of hearts. Do not waste our Ramadan. Do not spoil our Ramadan before we even get into it. And leave all the other aspects. And Alhamdulillah, embrace each other as brothers.